Welcome to Campaign Middle East podcast on the record with me, Justin Harper, the editor of Campaign Middle East. Now, today I'm very lucky to be joined by Jennifer Fisher, who is the Chief Innovation and Growth Officer at Publicis Group Middle East. Now, she is a regular columnist for Campaign Middle East and is a big believer in creativity and collaboration as powerful forces for positive growth. Jennifer has spent many years helping to shape the future of some of the most valuable brands in the world in agencies, startups and tech companies. Her experience spans brands such as Apple, Ikea, KFC, Expo 2020, Coca-Cola, Neom and Nissan. That's a long list and very impressive. She has also been part of a dozens of award wins across CanLion, FEs, Dubai Links and Campaign to name just a few. On a personal level, she is an avid traveller and she loves road trips and she's been across the US not once, but twice. Now, Jennifer, that was a long intro, but very impressive. Um, now, thank you for joining us today. Thank you for having me, Justin. It's a pleasure. It's great to have you. Now, today, there's lots of things we can be talking about and we will, but we're going to focus on innovation. And given your role as the Chief Innovation and Growth Officer, that makes a lot of sense. So can you tell us what actually you do in your role? That, that's a big question. I've tried to uh, explain that even to myself for the <laughs> past year or so. Um, I think what I focus on is leading on three areas. So growth, innovation and storytelling. But to be fair, everybody in our industry does those three things, right? Like we tell stories, we drive new ways of thinking and innovating, and we drive growth both for the groups we're part of and for our clients, right? So maybe what I particularly focus on is partnering with agency and leaders on how to accelerate, how to um, do this better, how to connect and integrate, and how to elevate the output, right? That, that's really what we do. Um, I have a team of 11, like amazing people from very varied backgrounds. So people who uh, can dive into data analytics, uh, into creativity and design, uh, into a strategy. Uh, and they come also from different backgrounds, right? from PR, from media, from creative. And so we partner with the agencies, we create hacks, we create like acceleration session, workshops, uh, we craft stories uh, and, uh, and everything from growth to kind of client work to just help us as a group to get there faster together. Okay, now that nicely moves us into something called the Growth Club, which uh, I know you're passionate about and actually you started at uh, Publicist Group Middle East. Can you tell us what the Growth Club is and, and what actually happened in your sort of most recent uh, meeting? Sure, sounds good. Yes, it's uh, it's definitely something I'm, I'm very excited about. Um, I, I guess it starts from uh, something that's both a positive and a problematic, right? So Publicist Group is quite large in this region. Uh, we have 11 agencies that go from uh, business transformation all the way to media and creative and uh, experience, uh, marketing experience and so on. So uh, wide variety, lots of expertise, over 3000 people, 11 agencies, like uh, over 20 C-level. Um, and so we have a real need to kind of integrate and bring those pieces together. And as much as we stand for power of one, right, uh, there's always opportunities for like more connectivity, more exchange of knowledge. And this is really what the Growth Club is. The Growth Club is a community that comes from all these agencies, all these backgrounds, uh, where we come together, we exchange best practices, we talk about the narrative of the group, uh, we accelerate knowledge, we dive into specific products, uh, and it really creates this more cohesive uh, vision uh, and uh, talents that connects agency to group, group to agency, and agencies together. And so, as you know, because you were here as a judge, uh, we did the launch uh, in the region. Uh, it was two days, 80 people uh, who came together from all over, right? From Lebanon, Egypt, Turkey, Saudi, you know, the UAE and so on. Uh, and, uh, and we had two days where we did kind of both very serious stuff and very fun stuff, right? We had a pitch hack, uh, we had kind of a, a growth challenge, uh, we had the narrative exercise around the group where kind of everybody got their hands dirty, so very hands-on, but we also like uh, crowned our rock, paper, scissors champion and we did speed dating, so uh, it was uh, quite a lot of fun. We did, uh, you know, spaghetti towers and, uh, and so on, so really also, you know, collaboration is also about, you know, people just getting to know each other and, and connecting at a human level. 
Yeah, no, no, it sounds like a great idea. And as you mentioned, I was there for, I came along for day two and I was one of the judges and there was great energy in the room and I helped, you know, judge one of the, one of the sort of competitions. That competition, can you tell us more, you know, was that, you know, that was to come up with a pitch there? Because I think there was a couple of different things. Maybe you could tell us about the, the different things. And I know there was a two million two million dollar sort of uh, project as well. So there's a couple of, you know, interesting things going on. Yeah, absolutely. So we did uh, what we call elevator pitches where everybody contributed ideas on how to grow the business. Uh, so that was like a really exciting one as well that we had on the first day. Uh, very competitive, right? Uh, our people are uh, very competitive. So this one we pitched like a few weeks uh, before uh, and it really created, uh, you know, a lot of build up and excitement towards the day. Uh, we had the pitch hack where uh, everybody was given kind of an RFP and then they had to kind of come up with the winning strategy and it was again like a power of one so each table had all the disciplines you know coming together from like data you know strategy creative media uh, we had people from sapient in terms of business transformation as well and epsilon uh, in our first party data and loyalty offering so really like big diversity of people like thinking together uh, and pitching uh, you know ideas that are relevant to our market and our clients um, so yeah, like uh, just a very uh, both collaborative and, and competitive setup. And then there's what's happened next, right? So there was the day of the event. Uh, but then what we do is we have kind of monthly catch-ups. We exchange best practices. People from agencies can share what they've worked on this month. Um, we... You know, 100,000 people worldwide. So we have lots of pools of expertise, new products that come on like all the time. So this is also a kind of constant re-onboarding to the group so that people know what's the latest thing that's happening. And then we have what we call expert missions where people get to kind of collaborate beyond their daily role, right? So they can contribute with like ways to elevate the business in different ways. Uh, and then they can pitch this to our C-level, right? So that we have people who can... Um, just go beyond, you know, what they do on the day to day and really contribute ideas to the business. Yeah. So that's the thing. I think, as you mentioned there, it wasn't just a one off two day project. This is an, part of an ongoing process, regular meetings to bring 11 different agencies across the region together. So, I mean, it sounds like a great, you know, sort of initiative there that, you know, I'm sure that it will sort of pick up, you know, and maybe get bigger and bigger, you know, two days, three days, four, who knows. But, you know, it was it was pretty epic, you know, and I was obviously part of that. Um, now, so how, in your view, can businesses today stay ahead of the game through innovation, given, you know, the fast-paced world that we live in? Uh, that's, a, that's a great question. Uh, you know, I always feel like it works at different levels, right? At an individual level, and that's the type of talent that you bring on board, it's all about curiosity. I think really that's like the core driver, you know, people who are always open to new ideas, who kind of go and dig, you know, there's a bit of like a, almost an obsessive nature uh, to that, you know, to always be pursuing uh, the new things that are exciting and doesn't have to be just technology, right? I think any topic can inspire us, right? Like I always look at, you know, even pop culture, movies, books, you know, uh, all that can trigger, you know, innovative ideas. Uh, the second area is at the team level, right? And this is about culture, right? a culture of growth and learning, encouraging, um, uh, you know, new ways to learn both uh, as a team and technically, but as well in terms of leadership. But then at an organization level, there's an investment uh, element, right? Because if you have like the right culture, you hire the right type of talent, you still need the backbone of the investment and the infrastructure that's critical. Like for example, in the group, right, there's been an investment for uh, the past decade in technology and data, more than any other holding company that's uh, numbering in the billions. It started with the acquisition of Sapiens, for instance, in terms of business transformation. And that has had a massive impact because today the revenue is like one third technology, one third media, one third creative. And that gives essentially our talent uh, the backbone to be able to explore with very tangible things, right? With the publicist sandbox, you know, or, or now with like the investment in, uh, you know, partnerships like Microsoft and OpenAI on a core AI, which is uh, intelligence uh, infrastructure for the group. Yeah. As you, you mentioned there towards the end of that AI, and so obviously no conversation around innovation could be, you know, complete without AI. And I think the conversation's moved on a bit now as in AI and what it's going to do. AI is being used. Could you, have you got any examples of how you're using AI in your day-to-day -day role? 
So there are so many ways that we're using AI. Like me personally, I use a lot. So we have a, a big sandbox with like almost 10 tools within, uh, within the group. Uh, everything from uh, being able to analyze documents. So when we have like very complex, you know, category information, right? And complex RFPs, et cetera. So we have kind of private sandbox. We can put all of these and instead of like going and find the information, it can analyze them for uh, us and then we can ask it questions, right? And it will summarize, it will kind of give us recommendations. What are the trends, et cetera. So this uh, accelerates, for example, the insights and the data analysis uh, really well. Obviously, image generation uh, just created a video about uh, the world in 2050, right? So we sort of like uh, used uh, our technology to first identify the trends uh, of where the world was going. Then we shaped kind of the script with the support of AI as well. And then we generated the images that kind of showcase like the vision of this future, right? And that's what we do, for example, as part of our LionX innovation program. Uh, so AI is such an interesting part. And I'm not even going into how it's powering, you know, our data capabilities, our performance, our media, because obviously that's part of the, uh, you know, bread and butter of, uh, of our business. Yeah. And now we're lucky enough to have you as a columnist for Campaign Middle East, which you, uh, you know, write on a regular basis. And we've got our magazine out now, um, which I, I showed you, which you wrote an article about. I think the title is This is Not Another Article About AI, which is a very intriguing insight there. Could you just give us a quick summary of that column, that what, what you wrote about? Sure, sounds good. Um, you know, when I write, uh, my starting point, a, a bit like in the keynotes that I, I focus on is, I always feel that the, the difference in knowledge for anyone in the industry is not that big, right? It's not as though, you know, I come in and I will kind of educate on things, right? Because we're exposed to the same information, you know, to the same products. And in the end, it's more about getting people to reflect on things. So I love using metaphors or stories in different way. Like I did a piece on like uh, AI being compared to aliens, for example, uh, once, right? And, and so this is kind of always my way. And I think in this case, uh, I focused on telling a story of the future in two different ways, right? So the story of the little girl, and there's one version that's kind of more dystopian and one version that's kind of more utopian in terms of how technology has evolved, right? AI, but also all the immersive technologies that, uh, you know, will, will become more and more part of our everyday life. Uh, and so the article kind of outlines those two paths. And the goal is really to help us reflect, not just on how we can apply these technologies, which is maybe what the whole industry is focused on right now, but to ask ourselves the questions, right, if we do it, then what happens then, right? And what are kind of the ethical uh, and the ethical consequences and the kind of the moral obligations that we have as we're making the decisions today that will impact the future? So that we're maybe a little bit more aware and sensitive as to what kind of paths we're creating for the future of not just our industry, but maybe our humanity as a whole. Yeah, no, absolutely. I think yeah, the ethical side can never lose focus of what it means, the repercussions. And just going back a step there, you mentioned comparing AI to aliens. Could you explain perhaps uh, how you can draw comparisons between those two? Sure. Um, so the, the starting point is that we are at this crucial moment of encounter, right? So very often, you know, in alien movies, you kind of, you know, start with that meeting point and how this engagement happens, right? And whether we end up into kind of a situation of war and mayhem, you know, and the end of world, or if it's, you know, a positive outcome that becomes like harmonious between the two sides, right? So that was kind of the starting point of this comparison, because what we do now at this moment of encounter will define a lot of what happens after in our, um, maybe not relationship, but in the outcomes of this encounter. Uh, but then there are other ways that AI and aliens are similar, right? Uh, uh, they are unknown because uh, as much as AI is something that we're creating, there's very much of this black box phenomenon where uh, the very complex layering of uh, a large language model means that we don't actually know how the AI reaches uh, its conclusions, right? And when we try to do kind of white box models today, they are not as accurate, they're not as strong uh, as those black box models. So, um, 
you know, the way that in uh, alien movies, you sort of like uh, do, uh, you open up the alien when not being kind of very nice about trying to figure out how it works. Uh, th there's kind of like something, something very similar there. There's also something similar in the media hype that goes with it, right? Um, and, you know, putting things in perspective, today, the number of PR executives have grown dramatically, while the number of journalists have actually shrunk dramatically in the last few years. And so the importance of PR in creating hype behind a technology has become really, really uh, critical for both startups, for investors, for uh, large companies in terms of stock prices. And so we need to also be able to um, put this maybe with a little bit more relativity in terms of, uh, you know, how excited we are about some, something versus the level of maturity of that thing. And then it's also similar in terms of like how maybe we dramatic we are and what we're predicting in terms of outcomes. So we have both you know, a lot of predictions around how it's going to change everything, right? Make the whole world better, solve everything from our climate crisis to, uh, you know, inequalities and education problems and healthcare problems, all the way to it's going to be the end of the world, right? Humanity is going to disappear, machines are going to take over, right? So it's very similar uh, in such a way. And actually, we've already had a first encounter with AI that can maybe dictate what happens next, which is our encounter with the algorithms that are managing platforms, right, like Google and like Meta that are feeding our feeds, our recency uh, and um, our relevancy, you know, in everything that we research and engage with today. And what we see when we analyze this engagement is that it's neither extremely positive nor extremely negative, right? There are ways in which it has been transformational and our access to knowledge, our way that it's powered up our creativity, but it's also been a, a challenge in terms of misinformation and, you know, creating bubbles, right? And that's why, you know, for example, in this article, you know, I just want us to reflect a little bit more about the consequences versus um, to rush without necessarily thinking through the type of work that we want to be creating. Hmm. And I know, thanks for that explanation. Now I can see why the two can definitely be compared. And having read your columns over sort of the last 12 months or so, I know you're sort of very cultural and, you know, you love arts and love movies and books. So if it'll be easy when I ask you this question, it'd be an easy answer. Your favourite alien movie? Oh. Well, maybe not easy because there's so many you like. <laughs> yes. Uh, you know, it was a funny one when I prepared this keynote uh, with alien movies uh, in mind. I realized that most of my team had not seen any of the movies that I kind of consider iconic. Uh, so I think two of the recommendations that I particularly made to them was to watch the Aliens series. Uh, in the scary side of things, I think those are just really amazing. Uh, and uh, the Men in Black, right, and kind of good popcorn movies. Mm -hmm. uh, I think these are... Uh, must watch uh, for sure yeah now AI obviously hogs a lot of the headlines there it's very much a buzzword maybe authenticity is is a buzzword one that isn't a buzzword yet integrated leadership but perhaps could now you're going to tell us more about what integrated leadership means and just how it sort of you know relates to the industry so that's something I'm very passionate about I feel it's something that the industry needs needs a lot more of uh, when we look at the way that humanity had evolved, right, and like, for example, Sapient is a great book for that, right, but we see that collaboration has been a key trigger for the human race, you know, evolving. And, uh, and when we look today at the level of complexity that exists in the world, right, so let's say no human, uh, single human being can build an airplane, right, or so, um, we need uh, stronger collaboration, stronger ways of working together. And our industry has also complexified right over the years to be able to do work at its best. We need experts. And even within one domain like media, we need experts in many areas, right? From performance, you know, to, uh, you know, kind of more ATL, you know, like full funnel, right? And so data and analytics, etc. And that's just like one area. Then if we want to have like a full marketing approach that's uh, holistic, you know, that looks at the entire experience, we need a lot of different experts coming together. And so integrated leadership is about uh, leadership that's collaborative, that brings the best of the experts together. And it requires um, 
a new generation or a new type, right? It's, it's not about age, right? But it's about the mindset. Uh, leaders who don't have egos, leaders who understand that it's kind of not about them, but it's about bringing together people uh, in the best way possible, being able to connect ideas and to build on each other so that we can have a lot more of this power of one approach uh, rather than, uh, you know, everybody has this little turf, you know, and is trying to kind of protect that space. Yeah. So when you, you know, we talked about the growth club there and bringing people together. Was there a, a leadership part of that as well, where you sort of, you know, talked about integrated leadership? That was probably a, a good opportunity to, to bring up the subject. Yeah, I mean, the growth club is exactly an example of like, how do we drive this at a group level? Uh, we had all our C-level be part of this. Uh, in that kickoff, we have not, but we have a couple of like quarterly deep dive where one of them is on uh, leadership. So that's definitely an area that we're exploring. And then actually as part of the expert mission, we're looking specifically at power of one leadership, which is really that, right? Which is, um, it requires also different sets of behaviors, right? Like the accountability, the way you lean in, you know, the way you accompany the clients, you know, not just in your area of expertise, but kind of all the way through to unlocking the right kind of questions and answers uh, is really critical. So it's definitely one way that uh, we want to kind of deepen our integrated leadership. Okay, and then my final question is, how can we tie AI to that leadership conversation there? You know, integrated leadership, it's it's sort of, you know, an overlap between the two there. Uh, an integrated leader will be using AI. Uh, AI will help you become a better leader. Uh, I think AI right now is something that enables, you know, speed, access, uh, the way that maybe internet uh, did uh, to kind of start with. Um, but this new age uh, of leadership requires us to go much beyond technology, right? So uh, technology is here and maybe it's the part that we talk the most about, but actually human intelligence, both in being able to work with the tools and integrate them into our day to day, but also in bringing the people together in driving purpose and in inspiring in ensuring that uh, the way we use the technology is ethical, uh, is purposeful, drives creativity, right? So we don't want technology like bringing down creativity. We want technology to actually allow us to be even more human, right? More insightful, more cultural, you know, more authentic, you know, to your point. So um, it's the role of leadership with AI is even more critical because AI can be almost more something that equalizes the level of thinking uh, while uh, leadership and our humanity is what takes it to the next level. Yeah, brilliant. That's a perfect way to end things there. Um, now, Jennifer, thank you very much for coming on. It's been an absolute pleasure to have you on our podcast. Thank you so much for this chat, Justin. Thank you.